Last time on Delightful Travelers, we came back to Bangkok to figure out if it's a city we could live in. We tried out public transit, visited a mega mall, and ate some delicious Thai food. In this video, we'll be checking out Chinatown. We hear it's one of the best places to go in Bangkok, and that at night, it can be a little, well, crazy. I'm Trevor, and this is Anna. In this series, we're back in the incredible country of Thailand. Make sure to hit subscribe and click the like button so you don't miss a single video. A huge thanks to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Welcome to Chinatown. I'm on my way now. Welcome back to another video here in Bangkok. We're still so excited to be hanging out in this city for quite some time. Today, we're in a different area. Yeah, we've been making it a mission to try to see a little bit more of this massive city while we're here. Last time we didn't do a very good job, we were super busy, <laughs> but this time we're going to Chinatown and we're gonna explore the surrounding areas as well. So if you happen to be new around here, we've made it a little bit of a mission of ours to slow travel a little bit more, find places to live in the short term, you know, one or two months and really settle in, but also finding places that we love around the world that maybe eventually we could live in a little bit longer term. So here we are in Bangkok, so we're making a little bit of a goal to try to explore a little bit more, figure out what the neighborhoods are like, could we actually live here? And so in this video we're going to be in Chinatown seeing what this neighborhood's all about. We are starting things off right here at this massively huge gate. It is the Chinese gate. It's absolutely incredible. Look at the color and the detail in this. Now, here's the thing. We're starting off in Chinatown, but what this place is known for is not just beautiful things like this. It's really known for street food, a little bit of nightlife, so we're going to hang out here first, we thought we'd come over, just check the area out before we kind of get to that part later in the video. So one thing we noticed right away is this area is much more chilled out and calm. It's like easy to cross the street here, look at this. <laughs> so we've been staying uh, in the Supuvit 30 area for the most part and it's really busy there. But uh, over here, yeah, I like that it's uh, chilled out. You should see what's in front of me now. This seems to be one of those streets where it's like a tool, like a tool street or something. Huh? It's funny how different cities seem to have this thing where all of one area will be the same type of store. Here seems to be like auto mechanics or like <laughs> car stuff. Yeah, look, I'll uh, show you guys what I mean. Like this is a shop that's clearly fixing things, but in there, like it's just a ton of parts, all spare parts in there. So I'm not sure if the area we're actually in right now is considered Chinatown proper, but it is around that area. There's a lot of street art in this area. Something I didn't realize until I started researching what to do in Chinatown and there's a lot of stuff about Oh, it's street art, amazing. This is called Talat Noi, something like that. Street art, it's a whole street full of like, <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's a good mix of, you know, you can see, well, there's different kinds of art right here, but also on this side, there's like pictures. Yeah, I wonder if they change that up here or yeah, like, like, permanent thing. So check out this one. This is uh, an old car. There's another older car up here. There is a bit of a story with the car artwork specifically. Sort of. I imagine there is an actual story that I don't know. If someone actually knows it, leave it in the comments. But what I do know is that when I was looking on Google Maps and I kept coming up with these little pinpoints for various art art displays around this part of the city, these sort of like old junk cards yeah. kept, kept coming up. Like I, I guess around here somewhere, maybe we'll stumble upon it. There's like junkyards of cars. But I wonder if these paintings are like kind of a homage to that, kind of like a tribute to the old classic automobiles. So I have this coffee shop on my list, but what I read was it's really hard to find and sometimes you might need a guide. So it's gonna like go down a junk street, which I think is actually the street we were just on. Maybe it's a, become more of an art street since they first wrote about this place or they first formed this place. But you kind of come in through, it almost feels like an old <laughs> junk building. Can, can we just point out, we're standing in a pile of junk. Look around here. This does not look like it should be here. It doesn't look like we should be in here right now, right? Yeah, but I hear people upstairs, so I think we're in the right place. <laughs> you never would have known this beautiful place is up here from the street. If we hadn't have researched it, never would have found this on our own, that's for sure. But we went for some coffee, of course. Went for an iced latte. They have a big list of drinks, a lot that I'm not familiar with. It's very serious coffee here. You even got to pick the type of bean that you want. We just went with the host blend because not good. I don't have a preference. Do you guys have a preference on your coffee beans in the country that they're from or anything like that? Yeah, sometimes we do try Thai coffee, like a Thai bean, but I think this one is a mix. Yeah, and it's got, this is cool, a big ice cube in it rather than a whole bunch of little ice cubes. <laughs> Let's see how it is. Oh, 
well. Yeah, <laughs> that's excellent. The price of this guy uh, was not too bad, honestly. You know, Bangkok can be expensive. That's one thing we are realizing, but I think this was around like 350 USD. So we just have to talk about these amazing coffee shops in this city. These are the types of things that make us want to live in Bangkok and just coming to this new area today and finding a, a gem. Do I call it a hidden gem? Because it was hard to find, to get up here, but it was just really cool and really unique. So we're learning quickly that Bangkok's neighborhoods are very, very different. And if we did kind of live here for a while, like say like a few months or as long as we can extend our visa, it would be really hard to pick. We're curious if you guys have been here before or if you're from Bangkok, what's a good area to live in the city? We're back out having a, a proper explore with the motorbikes. It looks like we're just walking what, what appears to be some kind of like a mini street market. Or maybe it comes alive more at night. We haven't done this in a while, just feet on the ground, just trying to get a feel for the neighborhood. But I can tell you so far we're liking this place. We just came over to Warehouse 30, which apparently is like an area that used to be a warehouse. Now it's turned into like art gallery and a bunch of different shops and there is a peacock. <laughs> Uh, there's a peacock just wandering around here. Hey, big guy. We also just found a cute little kitty sleeping in front of the shop. I wonder how the kitty and the peacock feel about each other. <laughs> it's got a collar on. <laughs> yeah, maybe it belongs here. But yeah, look at this. So this is one of the uh, one of the shops, and it doesn't look like a brand name or anything like that either. No, I think it's all like really, really local artisan type place. And there's a gallery, there's shops. There might be a coffee shop here as well, but we did just have coffee, so maybe not. Today. <laughs> well, it's good to know you can get all of your kind of hipster clothing if you want to, but there's more in here than just that. Look at all these different things. <laughs> that kind of like the theme of the last place, it was a lot of junk. In this place, it's almost like not junk, but restored. Yeah, there's even records here. There's art over there. Like basically, they have everything random in here. Yeah, and some really funky clothing. I had almost this exact same pair when I was like 14 or 15. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, look at this. It has the old uh, the old Smiths. It's like all old, cool, retro stuff. Very cool. <laughs> Making our way uh, out here and look who it is again. You guys, this is one of the most unique shopping strips we've ever <laughs> come across anywhere. This is like what you'd find in Brooklyn in New York, but completely on steroids. <laughs> this is wild. Who knew this it was is, in Bangkok? I totally didn't expect this at all. All the shops are so high end. There's still like artwork around and just the buildings are interesting. Like, look at that. Wow. You guys, Bangkok just uh, absolutely, completely surprises us all the time. So as we walk more and more in this area, we're definitely finding that it's not difficult to find street art here. It's literally everywhere. There seems to be all these like old walls, I guess, and they've really taken advantage of them. And I keep seeing this one in all the pictures, actually, when you look up street art here in Bangkok. Seems to be a famous one, I think. Do you know what it is? Cool no clue, looking. no idea. <laughs> well, whatever this is, we like it. It's pretty crammed back here. I had to kind of. It's fun. So we are fully aware that this is a very touristy thing to do. But at the end of the day, we are tourists, and it's probably it has to be done. Come on, it has to it's be fun. Done. It's like the one mode of transportation we haven't uh, tried around the city yet. Yeah, it's like we've so mastered fun. public transit. It's trying to do a tuk tuk. Yeah, and it's not too many countries that you get to kind of zip around an incredibly enormous city in something like this. It was super quiet. There was hardly any traffic on the streets, but clearly we got to the traffic area. We're in a bit of a traffic jam, but it's a pretty traffic jam. I know, it's so pretty here. Look at this, guys. Look at the view back there. All the lights here. I'll zoom in. Well, that was so much fun, but now it's time to cross the street. Holy moly, this is just... At least just... traffic isn't really moving. Yeah, it's not moving, but guys, this is, uh, this is a wee bit crazy. Well, this street is... Uh, 
It's what I call alive. There's cars on it. We think it's the spot where you get a lot of the, the good food. We're still discovering that. It's the first time here. Yeah, at the so end they of the kind day. of call this a nightmark, but it really is just a street with yeah. a lot of people still with traffic and lots and lots of street food. Yeah, look at look how busy it is here. So yeah, cars, tuk tuks, motorbikes that way. You got like over here, food, food, and just more food. We're not even sure what we're looking to eat right now, but we found this little dumpling stand and it looked great. Now they have a whole bunch of different kinds. We ordered two. The thing is they look identical. So how are you supposed to know what which one is what? Uh, but we did order, I think it was barbecue pork and one's a minced pork. The only way to find out is by uh, trying one. So let's just go for it. Look at this little guy. Dumplings are so fun. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is the minced dumpling. It's absolutely delicious, you guys. The pork is so tender, so flavorful, and I always forget, like, a dumpling is really, really soft. Like, look at that. It just pulls apart, it's kind of squishy, it's not too hard, it's not too soft. It's a perfect kind of wrapper for something like this. So, if you're into minced pork, mm. That's what you want. Oh my god, the flavor in this thing. All right, let's try dumpling number two, which we think is going to be the barbecue pork, but we will see what the difference is when we get into it. Trevor was mentioning dumplings. I don't know if he used the word steamed, which is what these are. They're steamed dumplings. They're not boiled. They are not fried. They are steamed. So they're super soft and fluffy and kind of doughy on the outside. <laughs> I just love that we're right on the street. It's so loud out there with the traffic. Uh oh, do we think that's the mint? Oh, that's the minced one. This is the mint. Uh oh. We were wrong. Show me that. <laughs> uh, now I can see. Mm -hmm. So this is almost more like a sausage on the inside. It's like one big piece of minced pork that's together as a bunch, like much like I said, like a sausage. Right away, the outside of the steam bun is super soft and pillowy. If you've never had a steam bun before, you probably wouldn't really know the texture, so like super pillowy is the only way I know how to describe it. A little sticky on the outside, but nothing too crazy. On the inside, it's very oniony. I, see, I think I see some like scallions in there, so you get like kind of a green onion flavor to it. Take another bite. So I would say the first one, the barbecue pork, was a lot more flavorful in terms of like different spices that were in there. Obviously, I mean, it's called barbecue pork, so I would have expected that. This one's just a lot more onion. The next thing we're trying is basically a Thai donut. So I did a little bit of research. This was on my list of something we had to try tonight here in Chinatown. However, one thing I kind of messed up was I looked up the name, or I think I thought I looked up the name of these, but also where to get them at. And the name of the place that we went to was called Patongo. I think that also might be the name of these donuts, but I'll look it up later and I'll put it on the screen if it's something different. But basically they are like deep fried little doughy things and they're covered in, let me get this, Thai pandan custard. We Not had sure to go what to pandan is, but it's green. <laughs> yeah, and we're just eating it right on the street. Everyone's oh, yeah. staring, no big deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but let's try these guys, yeah. man. They look so good. Green like, sauce. What? Yeah, look at that like mysterious green sauce. It smells deep fried and kind of coconutty. <laughs> I wonder how hot these are gonna be. Oh, you go for the whole thing. Mm. Good go. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a tasty little treat. They're super, super crispy on the outside, a little bit soft on the inside. The uh, sauce itself, the pandan, uh, whatever it was, uh, custard, really good. A little bit like earthy flavor to it, but generally the taste that you get out of it is coconut. Oh man. They look so good. I'll have a bite in a minute. No need for me to explain it, but I want to point this out. Look at this. Like we're just eating right on the side of the road and you can see them like cooking up some other things. Mm, those noodles in there look really good. <laughs> they look good, man, this city though. It's alive, huh? I know. <laughs> well, what an action-packed day. I'm so glad we decided to come and scope out this area. We didn't just come for the food. I know you guys might say you could have eaten more food. Oh, we absolutely could have eaten more food. We could, do a, we could easily do a multiple food blocks in this area but today we kind of wanted to explore the area see what mm. this the whole re you know area of bangkok has to offer not just street food so it was interesting yeah, to go man. from like the quiet streets earlier in the day to like this is nuts uh, the more we see of this city the more we like it it's incredible and i'm very curious what you guys think all of you guys that follow us from week to week did you know bangkok was like this we showed you many different places in the city now 
but every time we go to a new neighborhood, it just surprises us. And we haven't seen anything we don't like yet. We're really, really loving this, this city. This is awesome. One of our favorite big cities for sure. Now, if you got this far in the video and you're like, who the heck are you guys and you're new? Mm -hmm. Trevor, Anna, delightful travelers. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Heck, leave us a comment. Hit the like button. It helps us out. An extra thanks to all of our patrons and our YouTube channel members that support us and all of you guys that follow us each and every week. We know who you are and you guys come back for every video. Without you, we wouldn't be doing this. It's loud around you. I'm about to end it, but I have to wait one second. Getting rid of it. All right, guys, that's it. From Bangkok, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.